Josh uh, from Cake and Wine here in Napa. We have uh, a couple wines to taste here today. I'm really excited. Um, Josh has a really stellar reputation in the valley. And something like that. Something like that. Um, tell me about how you got into Cake and. Um, I started this company uh, six years ago with my friend Carlo Trincaro. Uh, we were both born and raised here in uh, San Helena. Trincaro, like Trincaro Wine, right? Trincaro Napa Valley Club. Uh, yeah, his grandfather started the better house. All right. Uh, so we started this when we were finishing up college. Um, intent to make uh, wines that were high quality but accessible to our generation. Um, so the name taken came from any specific place? Or? Originally uh, all the names were taken, so that's how it came about. Oh, but, that's awesome. Um, the, the symbol on the front of the bottle represents the path taken from starting in Napa Valley and coming full circle, so oh, really our cool. two paths. All right, so we're going to start with reds. We're going to go a little backwards today. I always like to start with um, sort of like their flagship wine. This is what this is, this is what you guys started with. Correct. Um, and then moved into uh, a, another, I think it's kind of a funny name, the complicated wine. Right. So um, that's that's our, our, our California coastal wines under cool. the complicated wine. All right. So let's taste taken. This comes from uh, 18 properties spanning from South Napa um, to Calistoga. Oh, wow. It's super balanced. Thank and you. You know, it's kind of, it's one of those wines for me that like, if I'm looking for a red wine that I want to have for dinner, but I don't want to like knock myself out with so much fruit and so much acidity and so much body. Right. It just kind of like fits that perfect little middle ground. It's pretty me. easy and ready, ready, yeah. to, ready to drink. Right Definitely ready to drink. Is that how they're made? They're, they're made to like kind of be... All of our wines are made in a, in a way that they're just super approachable now. That's why it's Merlot. That's why a lot of our wines are blends. Um, I think cab on its own, you know, maybe you need to decant it, or it's not. It's going to take a while to, to to get to the point where you want to drink it. Where with the Merlot, it's softer, it provides a nice mid palate. Tell me what you usually drink taken with. It's 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 pretty universal, being that it's that Merlot, but it, it it's it's balanced with Merlot and it's not like way over the top. Yeah. But I mean, I guess if you chose one thing, you know, I'd go for some Rivera Steak. Steak. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Go to press for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, this to me is just like, this is, this is great grilling wine. Like, this is what I'm totally. going to have, like, outside of, like, on a day like this in the summer and the yeah, spring. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, well done in the flagship wine. This Thank is awesome. You. And 35 bucks, you can't really beat that for a Napa Valley. And this is our seventh, seventh vintage, which is crazy. This is your seventh vintage? Mm -hmm. I didn't think you guys were that. It's cool, because I feel like, you know, in Napa, like, you don't see a lot of young people in the wine business. So, I think that's... Super yeah, we're, we're starting so to see young. some of our generation getting back into their parents' wine business, which is nice. But um, yeah, not as many as you think. And you have a pretty cool legacy as far as like. Um, yeah, my dad um, was a family winemaker at Dominus. Uh, made Camus for much of his career. And yeah. I do add Beaverham together, which is a kind of small, small little project that we co own. Uh, so Carlo and I both really like Burgundy. Um, and when we were talking about. You know, stylistically, how we wanted to approach Chardonnay, we wanted to make sure it was more in that manner. So, this is all Sonoma Coast, Petaluma Wind Gap, which is okay. super cool climate, and then Russian River Valley, which is a little warmer. So, the combination of the two, I make for like a really balanced uh, Meyer lemon, tropical notes, uh, pretty like nice bright Chardonnay. Yeah. Um, we let it go 50% of the way through Mallow. What's that mean? Uh, through Mallow the fermentation, through yeah. the secondary fermentation, <laughs> uh, and then. 20% uh, new French oak, the rest of the season. Um, all low toast burgundy barrels. So you're not getting a huge amount of uh, that like oaky butteriness that mm -hmm. you, might, you might think of um, when it comes to like yeah. some Chardonnays. But you still get a little. So it's yeah, like you a do. Little, I'd say it's, like ha it's like halfway there. Yeah. You know? It's really pure and it's refreshing. I mean, yeah. we're drinking this room temperature right now, so just imagine if it, if it was cold, it, you know, it's, it's easy. Yeah, and it looks like it's 13, 13, 9% alcohol, so not like. Crazy big alcohol in this wine. Which yeah, I we really try to keep it down. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's very balanced. I mean, you know, we talked about taking being balanced as well. This is a very balanced wine. Um, you know, you get that really strong minerality. You get a lot of that body, but it's not like overwhelming. It's not overwhelming as right. It's all just kind of working with each other in tandem. Anything you like to drink this one? Um, any kind of seafood, like scallops. Um, it can really combat rich richness as well. Yeah, totally, yeah, that, the acidity in this, though it's not overbearing. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. 
from, so yeah, like a Chardonnay from California under 20 bucks. Especially from Sonoma Coast. From Sonoma Coast, yes. Yeah, I mean, there's a plenty from, from Cali, but, but I think Sonoma Coast at $18, I, I, I challenge you to find Sonoma Coast at these two price points, like the Chard and the Pinot. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. There's, there's, there's not a ton no, out there. No, there's not a ton out there. And not, I mean, there's a few, but not of this caliber, this quality. Okay. It seems, I mean, I could be completely off base. It seems like you're like really focusing on like the younger generation of the wine drinkers. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think for me, and probably maybe less for you since you grew up in a wine household, but for me, like drinking wine and drinking good wine was always complicated, for lack of a better term. Um, yeah. Just because. You know, there was a lot out there. Yeah. Um, and it was always like geared to like my parents and my grandparents. Um, and it's expensive. And it's expensive, right? Yeah. So like when I'm, you know, I'm in my twenties and I was in my early twenties before I was in the business. Um, you know, this would have been super to have like a great Chardonnay that was really well balanced and well made and and taken care of under twenty bucks. So I applaud sure. that for sure. That's Thank awesome. You. So also from Sonoma County. Sonoma Coast. Sonoma Coast. So Russian River Valley peddling the wind gap against. So these are real appellate these are, you know, like great appellations within the Sonoma Coast. This is a hundred percent Pinot Noir, you have to say that these days. Do you? Um, well, there's, lot, there's so many Pinots that aren't hundred percent Pinot Noir. No names. No we won't names. Um, but no, that's, is, help, that's helpful though. Yeah, 100% yeah. Pinot Noir, so it's really a pure expression of the grape, um, and it's all aged in French Burgundy barrels, yeah, and about a quarter, so you get a little bit of oak on there. Yeah. It definitely comes across in this one more than the Chard, I think, but, um, but not a ton, and so I think it makes for, once again, a balanced wine. Um, it's elegant and sexy, and it's Pinot Noir, but at the same time, it's not, I mean, there's definitely like some power to it. I, I, yeah. I don't think, there's some concentration, I don't think it's like a wimpy Pinot Noir. No, it's definitely, you know, people think of like Pinot I at least from my experience in the business, like I think when people think of Pinot Noir, they think it's like, it's just a light body wine. It's, yeah. You know, it doesn't, it can stand up to meats, it can stand up to anything with any sort of substance. Um, but like when it's well made, Pinot Noir has the strength of, you know, the biggest cab you can find if it's, if it's made right and it has the right fruit. For sure. Which, this guy, I mean, this like packs a serious punch as far as like, the power and the structure behind it it's very um it's very i mean you can tell that you're a burgundy fan of this wine yeah sure but yeah i mean definitely and so this was our uh, first vintage this is your first vintage that what this was yeah oh, we're, we're bottling our uh, we just bottled our second vintage it's so nice to see like throughout all of these wines how much balance and how much care has been taken in the wines and you know it's it's nice to see all three have been that way and the acidity is there this is not um this is not like enamel tearing acidity. It's just there to give it structure and backbone and to like pair with foods. But you know, I could totally drink this on its own. Like I, I would love this with food, but I would love this maybe even with like a slight chill on it too. Like For sure. On a warm day. Yeah. I know these are all like kind of your babies, but like, do you have a favorite of the bunch? Um, it really depends. Like what? Yeah, right now, we make a two Italian wines from Puglia, Italy, um, that I'm physically making over there. Pretty exciting. And they're making uh, Pinot Grigio, which you normally wouldn't make there. Okay. Uh, but it's really a full body Pinot Grigio. It's gone over really well with the American uh, consumer. Mm -hmm. And then we make a Sangiovese Cab Merlot Blanc. That's actually been kind of my go to. Um, I think probably partly because it's new. Okay. Um, but that's been my go to over the last like five months, uh, four months since it's been out. And that one's here in the States? Yeah. Okay. That's under available and it's $13 retail. Okay, so you've taken, complicated, complicated and, available. and available. And then the other complicated wine I didn't show today, I actually didn't show the ones that I've been drinking a lot, but I, <laughs> but, it, but these are, I mean, they're all, I'm very proud of all, the, uh, all three of these wines. Is there any future complicated taken available projects? Right now, I mean, the idea with available is to like hone in on different regions in the world and mm -hmm. make like, you know, maybe wines in France and Spain. And we're working on some stuff, but... Um, you know, you, we we're on, we have six wines in the market now, and we really want to make sure we're like positioning them all properly. And so, right for right now, we kind of like boom, boom. We added like two things every year, mm -hmm. and this year we kind of decided let's like really focus on what we have. Mm -hmm. We have we have we're in fifty states, and we have a lot of salespeople. You're really, in, you're in all fifty states. We are. That's yeah. Very impressive. Yeah, it's it's fun. So there's no reason you should not be finding this wine somewhere. You can find them. You can they're, find they're them. out there. <laughs> you make sure they're yeah. out there. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Josh. I appreciate it. Thank you. And, thanks for uh, thanks for uh, always nice tasting to like, my have lines. you here in like a nice day. And so Absolutely. Like, Josh like lives down the street, so we're legit friends in Sonoma Valley. Which is Cheers. A good friend to have when you have great wine. Salute. 
Absolutely. Thank you.